Um, supposedly there's going to be a soul swapping event. Is that like a Tupperware event or what? I mean, I'm, I'm like, I've never heard of this. Like, where's the soul uh, or September, September 22nd. Well, that's long gone now. It's the 30th. Yeah, I don't, I didn't see that happening. No, so no. no. What's the real purpose of the country of Iceland? It's for a place for Icelanders to live, people. And also leprechauns or elves. They all believe in leprechauns. It does feel like when I tune into the energy, I've never been there. I'd like to go someday, but. Oh, I've been. I, wonderful. It's one of the few places outside of Norway that have been. It's awesome. Yeah. But it does feel very high frequency. Wow. I mean, it's just, I think because it hasn't been, um, the land is really pure or something in some ways. Like, I don't think it's been, um, Maybe it's not tampered with. Yeah. 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 So country of fire and ice. There's ice, there's volcanoes, there's hot springs. It's they're wonderfully open to gays. So there's a lot of gay, you know, a big gay population, which, you know, to me means that that kind of acceptance means a higher vibration. Yeah. And, exactly. um, and so many colors in on the buildings. It's really cool. Um is the devil a real entity or merely a human choice? Uh, it's the devil. <laughs> there is um, in this dimension, what we have created is good and evil. So there is that. But let's think of the devil as a consciousness, right? Okay. It's not necessarily like a being in particular oh yeah yeah does that make sense like the little devil on your shoulders like the devil made me do it so, okay like it's conscious yeah exactly like christ consciousness there's devil there are lower energies there are there is darkness on yeah, this plane still, anybody that says all still in the spectrum of light it's just the darker end of it everything is light people everything yeah so it's just you know darkness. but we don't want to like hang out with that too much right no, obviously no, no. i could go to yeah. their own pubs yeah right. exactly. what uh, have you ever had wars with reptilian beings there have been many wars but it, i'm oh, not seeing warriors. anything it's not like that no I'm not seeing, yeah warriors. all right what is the um elohim's view on the chimera group from the andromeda galaxy who practice soul scalping taking souls from one body and placing them into another first of all is that even true and if it is what um i have never heard of this but i'm hearing that there is some truth to that okay mm -hmm. wow Ooh. why would they do that there's like a siphoning that's happening i, I don't taking know I don't... From one body and placing them into another yeah um It's just like what I, it's like turn down the noise right now. I mean, notice what's important. I, I kind of think they don't want to answer this question. Turn down the note, notice what's important. What is a value, right? Yeah, this is um, not important to talk about. I mean, we've got so many questions. Uh, what are the roles of the Demiurge and how is, so is Sophia related to them? That's the geneticist of the Anunnaki. I don't even think that's related to this topic of Elohim, right? Mm -mm. All right, uh, was this isn't either, but was Moses an ET? These are not the um, no oh. Moses was um, here to. I mean, he's connected to his living God, is what I'm hearing. Okay, all right. Um. Is it you protecting the slaves of the Red Sea Exodus? Was was it you, the Elohim? There is, there was assistance. Yes. Is this uh, story of Adam and Eve true or metaphors? Uh, metaphor. Okay. Can Elohim tell us about the situation in Afghanistan? Why no world country nor Afghan men helped the NAF Panzer Valley resistance? Oh, that's uh, I don't know. That's I guess, are you going to help with that? That's the only Elohim element I can pick out of this question. So I'm just hearing that you can call on them for assistance okay. or anything. Are there any Elohim walk-ins or incarnated Elohim presently on earth? Very few, very few. 
Like how many? Okay. I'm seeing like under 50. Like it's, Whoa. it's, yeah, not very many. Okay. So Eric, did you have any angelic source? I mean, origins? Er Eric looks, yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, Eric has angelic origins is his point. And um, he had remembered his angelic origins after leaving earth, he shows me. Oh. He shows me angel wings. So he, oh. yeah. Have you seen them? Has she shown them to you? Because I feel like you've seen oh. them. Yeah. I I, oh, no, I, somebody drew a picture with them with wings on it. It was beautiful. Um, or painted. Uh, Anybody I think that's else? how he's saying because he, you you saw them is what he was showing to me. Anybody else in my family? I, I think that Arlene, my first granddaughter, first grandkid, uh, was cut straight from source apparently. So that's I guess angelic. Anybody else in the family? It looks like you're like a star seed. <laughs> you're, okay. you're a, yeah. Um, do you have do you have a memory of your um, galactic origin it feels like you No, i know I, I did have an atlantean and all that stuff and I was yeah earth angel and all that but anybody else beside me or it, it, or how many of the people viewing have angelic origins do you think about 30 percent wow uh but see oh. here's the thing just because you have angelic origins does not mean you don't have to do work on earth yeah, you need to get uh, stuff. I got my wings. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 like a misconception, scary, dude. Exactly, because because a lot sometimes you know we'll fall and we'll forget and we'll get caught and yeah, reincarnating over Falling and over. Angels. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. It's easy to forget. It's very difficult to remember. You know, a lot of people who are from angelic source. You know, they have a lot of problems with their physical body, for one, and they also the feeling that they don't belong, they tend to get lonely, and then that goes into self-loathing, and that really makes you completely get farther and farther and even disconnect from the, the idea of, of that person being divine and from angelic source, right? Exactly. It, it's a really hard contract. It's not easy, right? And a lot of people who are attracted to, to your work, Elisa, and to this channel, I think, are have had that feeling growing up that they don't belong. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And there's a way in which you've created, and Eric, obviously, he created it too, this kind of way for people to kind of belong to something, yeah. you know, especially if you've never had that your whole life or you've always felt really different or strange or like you just don't fit in um that's a lot of broken people you know eric um used to go to starbucks most of the bum smokes but he would people would gravitate toward him maybe they sensed his angelic um broken people would gravitate toward him i think maybe they sensed his angelic quality yeah his energy and his he has Eric, when I look at him, he shows me, you know, you know, obviously in the way that, that he left the planet, he didn't feel this way at the end, but he has this lightness of spirit. Oh, and this, looking at the videos when he was a child. Yes, indeed. You know, the, and the lightness of spirit is like, a. it's like, they show me a yellow color and yellow also yeah. is like that joy that happiness. The, yeah happiness the dalai lama has that same energy different i don't mean <laughs> this game or he's laughing that i compared him to the dalai lama um, oh god but it's that lightness of spirit that people respond to you know now, even in when he was feeling broken they still eked out i guess and people would just bear their soul to him and people do that to me too a lot because well that's not surprising I yeah. love people so much. And so they do, you know, if, if I can't do this anymore, maybe it should be a bartender. I'll learn how to flip those things, you know, the cocktail things and shakers. Uh, I, I see an image of you at the bar making drinks and Eric standing right next to you. And he's like, 
Like the like cocktail with Tom. Yeah, Tom. yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm so clumsy, I would be fired the first day. All right. Um, what is the, uh, are the Elohim working with specific people on earth? Yes. Like, are there specific angelic projects that you're? Yes, part? yes. Um, different. I, I work with them a lot. Um, so some people, including yeah. myself, but you know, they, they, one, if you ask to work with them, you will be able to, I mean, there's no like, you know, like test or something you can okay. ask and meaning you can ask for assistance for your own life, or you can begin to become a conduit and channel their energy. Right. But that does require a certain, um, you have you there's work required to raise your vibration enough and yeah. your frequency enough to be able to hold that energy in your body as you're um, working or whatever uh, in healing capacity but um there are many on earth at this time who have decided to work with the elohim so do you have the power to heal are you asking them elohim. or yeah, I know you do. Um, they have well. They assist in clearing the necessary, like they help you with kind of clearing out. So it can be clearing out old karmic energy that you've had for oh. you know many lifetimes. Just sort of like clearing out um, that those energies that are sort of blocking you are blocking a person from who their true self-knowledge of who are they, they are the ones that help you cut ancestral dna for people yes they do do they help you clear trapped emotions in people um yes they do i work with them and then also the ascended masters a lot so it just depends on who shows up for the person because you never yeah. totally will know so the, the, what do they do with the karmic um, energy? From so it's, it's like, oh, well, sorry, I'm laughing because they show me like um, a broom and they sh they're sweeping out the dirt and the residue and the dust. Like we come in with accumulated lifetimes oh, of yeah. energy within our vessel that wants to leave at this point. So clear, they clear out the karmic energy that no longer serves our highest and greatest good? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, Among other things, there can be physical body healing. Well, just doing some of that, like like clearing trapped emotions, can do a lot of healing and cutting the ancestral DNA. Absolutely, and also, like if you think about it, if you came into the world with a problem or something that you just can't, you don't know where it comes from, you know, in in some way, it's nine times out of ten, it's from a past life. Yeah. You know? And so yeah. it's helpful when you start to work in that way. You can work with angels. You can work with practitioners. I mean, there's, you know, and just to you. work on. Yeah, yeah, you. Well, there's there's a, there's other people too. Um, oh, yeah. that no, you're the only work. one in the world. No. <laughs> you be a part of my um, divine team. Maybe you already are. I don't know. I, I, I don't have you on the little list. But I'm, you on, I'm on the... Um, Elena no, 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 um, Elohim, the Elohim. Oh, yes. You have the yes. divine team, the adepts, the founders, the universe, gods, or blah, blah, blah. Are you already on it, yeah. Elohim? Or, or do I need to add you? I think so. I see. I'm thinking they are. Okay. I'm going to add you in text just in case. We need all the help we can okay. get with people. Um, can you explain to us how to pray? When we pray, we pray to source, specific entities. How do you do it? Praying 101. How do you do it? A, a quiet, uh, so it's like coming to a quiet space in the mind, yeah. connecting with your own energy and from that space, praying, Okay. right? So from that space and prayer can be just an act of devotion yeah. to, to others, you know, you can be praying for others, but you can be devoting energy and love to others as you pray. So it's just to change this idea of prayer. Prayer is not negative. It's very positive. Yeah. And it's beautiful. And there's thoughts. Thoughts create Absolutely. reality. But, very to, but not to be praying from a place of 
desperation or, I mean, sometimes we pray from desperation. That's fine. I, I'm like, I do that once in a while, but praying from a place of devotion and, and also it's like a different energy. It's no longer about we're praying for something outside of ourselves to come in and fix our life. Oh, does, does that make sense? Yes. So what is it? It's then? just coming at, we're coming at, I am the prayer. I am the one who prays, yeah. right? I am also the answer because it, in those words, creating a new context for prayer in which you understand that you are part of the energy that you are asking to receive. Yeah. It's like the law of attraction, thought creates reality, those prayers, especially when you can co-create new realities using the power of love, which is such a powerful energy. If you include that in your, you know, in, in your prayers, then uh, whether it's for you, for somebody else, etc., and you tap into your own divine spark. Um, so that, that could be very powerful. So it's not like, Elohim, please save my dog from cancer or things like that. It's like you, I mean, you can certainly ask for assistance, but what I'm hearing is to include yourself as part of the prayer. Okay. 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 Which is it, that's a fundamental shift in the way we've been oh, yes, it taught is. to pray, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I like that. Well, and but I'm also seeing power. that it's Find it's power. just as valuable to spend time uncovering and answering the question who am i yeah in a, right learning who am i yeah mm -hmm. not like the roles we play but underneath that yeah of course right the vastness of that. nature mm -hmm. the best and divine nature yeah the more that we begin to recognize who we really are um prayers have a very different quality yeah mm -hmm. okay uh are are miracles from many pentecostal alike pastors really from a negative source from my observations the miracle healing seems real but yet i doubt the characteristics of the healer and the people healed the maybe characters of the healer and character and, of the yeah. well i'm hearing the words it depends yeah. <laughs> like i think it just depends on the motivation and intense uh, intention of who is 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 performing these acts right we are all you know they want to remind us we ourselves are capable of miracles through our consciousness right yeah but you yourselves know, guys the power of christ compels me and slap you on yeah the that, all of a sudden you can get out of the wheelchair and stuff are those people are some of those people real some of it is real because some of it also the person who receives maybe you know i did that funny example that you just did but that person maybe that received that healing i'm seeing could have the strong belief that i am healed yeah right? that's thought creating reality yeah and so yeah. get up and walk right um or and i'm also seeing this like say there's a group of people around them they could all be strongly broadcasting the collective belief that uh that person is healing that person is healed so it could be the group energy that also creates that experience okay do you know what i'm saying yeah, does that make sense yeah, yeah. wow because they're showing me it's like the congregation it's like the person with the so it's not just you know the pastor that imparts healing or something it's it's this maybe collective energy it's the person yeah. in the wheelchair so all right, so we already answered this, but if you want to add to it, uh, what is the best way to connect with you, the Elohim? Quiet space in the mind. Um, but if you can't do that, if you have trouble doing that, just see if you can get quiet, become quiet once a day, you know, for three to five minutes. Wow, that's so hard. Yeah, that's that's hard. That's so hard. Um, is Jesus's resurrection real? I mean, it, when we interviewed him, we found out he told Jesus, Yeshua, Ezekiel, Christ, you told us that um, that you really just lowered your heart rate and respiratory rate. You learned how to do that from the Yetic monks or something, and that you really looked dead, but you weren't, and then you were rescued in the dead of night, and you 
lived the rest of your days in France. And, and now historians are finding evidence of that being the truth. So that does feel correct. And when I check in with it, yeah. um, the resurrection there is, goes Easter. Dang it. But it, it's real in the sense that it was, a, there's like a deeply symbolic, um, it's a deeply sim, sim, symbolic act, yeah. right? The resurrection represents the coming or the knowing of the God within. And like sort of the merge with the higher self. So it represents the ascension, the dying of the lower self, which is oh. personality, ego. Mm -hmm. And we still have those things, but yeah. it's, it's and the dying of the lower self and this higher self energy entering the temple of the heart. Our temple. Yes. Mine. Mm -hmm. So that's why. So yet in a sense, what I'm hearing is the resurrection is real because all of it was meant to be this this hugely symbolic reference point for us to understand our own ascension right yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. so anyway so this whole christian religion is built on the whole concept that christ died for our sins so what do you do about that elohim mm -hmm. it's beginning to crumble right now is the image that i'm seeing Okay. That is a false notion. Okay. Um, well, he didn't die yeah. for our sins. Maybe he died. Well, I mean, his metaphorical death and resurrection was a lesson to us to become aware of our own vast divinity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And to become aware that we will you know, at some point in this in spiritual initiations, we will, the lower self will um, be in deference to this higher self. Not that we will actually physically die, but that we will, it will become, will become the, the Christ within. Does that make Death sense? Or at least a diminution of the ego so that the yeah. mind spark can shine through. So yeah, Absolutely. I never did agree with all that he died for our sins. Wow, I, she, I get away with murder and, you know, that's it. I mean, but he, there's another point to this, though, that I'm hearing, though. Yeah, seen. it's not that, but you are forgiven. Yeah, you are, you, right. Um, and but you know that, Elisa, but the, he wants to remind Jesus wants to remind everyone of that. Yeah. That from, you know, from the perspective of our higher self, or from a perspective of, of angels, we're not judged. Yeah, we're not. No, um, so what you're saying is that, and I apologize to you guys who are Christians because I, I really probably messed up on that because I, I don't really understand much about Christianity. Um, the love of Jesus. My great uncle was Cardinal of Spain. Okay, so I was raised Catholic the first five years of my life, but um, I forgot what's going with that. Uh, but I, I do feel like Jesus' message was, was different. It's not what is being interpreted as now. It's like what we, what we are talking about, discovering the God within your own temple and yeah. stripping away the ego. And, and also, oh, yeah, I remember now. There's really nothing to forgive. There's mm -hmm. nothing to forgive because Jesus told me that there is no, you have to teach kids right from wrong. So that you get the again eventually explain that there is no right or wrong. Everything is an experience. Now that doesn't mean yeah, go out and shoot your neighbor, but um, everything is contract. Not everything, but contracts and you know valuable, teachable moments and so on. So I still have a hard time grappling with that whole concept. But you know I'm fine. So anyway, the whole thing is there's really nothing to forgive. In yourself or in others well well there will be times when we do something maybe that we will want to ask for forgiveness right yeah. of course but you're already also forgiven okay yeah that's what does I mean. that make sense yeah exactly uh -huh. i just didn't know how to vocalize that all right last thing what is your message for humanity right now in these trying times of covid and terrorism etc cetera, etc cetera? Mm -hmm. 
Well, I see this, this beautiful, incredible sun coming up. Like we're at the dawn of this, we are the ancestors of new earth. And I don't mean that, I think all of us yeah. who are choosing to be conscious and to do work and to, you know, choose love, right? Yeah. And they're showing me this, yeah. Yeah. you know, to have courage in this time, because this isn't easy, but we all came here uh, to do this you know, we all did. And um, that we can really find a place of love within ourselves that's beyond anything that's happening in the world that feels difficult or chaotic. Mm -hmm. And when we find that space, we will be anchored. There's show me like a golden anchor. It anchors us into this, this new reality. The new earth. New earth. Yeah. We're here. That's cool. Well, we got our marching orders. Anyway, so guys, hit the notification button, the subscribe button, the like button, because I know you liked it. You guys would. And if you didn't, that's fine. I forgive you. Uh, and y'all check out Courtney at CourtneyDillon.com. And I love you, Eric. He says, I love you, Mom. You guys have been working together hard today, it looks like. Yeah, of course, we always do. Yeah. All right, I love you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.